guys, Geek with the Tractor. Today I am working out in the garden. I've been watching Roots and Refuge Farm. It's a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description so you can check them out too. But today's September 2nd. And normally I plant a garden at the beginning of the year, harvest it. At the beginning of the year, I might do a couple of, you know, staged plantings every couple of weeks or something like that. But I really have not done anything in the fall. So this year, <laughs> it's September, okay? So I was watching Roots and Refuge and uh, the lady on there, she was talking, she was actually planting things in September. I don't know where they live, but the climate kind of seems similar to where we are. We're in the Midwest here. So anyways, <laughs> I've got these beds here and um, I've got some potatoes. So I, what I went and did is I went and looked at everything that has, you know, like a harvest date less than 60 days. And I have some space here, uh, things that have been harvested and, you know, just not used. And so I figured, especially now, you know, um, I just was reading in the news about, um, you know, Nebraska, New Jersey, different places just having really bad uh, crops because of, of either drought or, you know, weather related issues. And it just makes me, you know, a little bit on the concern side. It seems like things, there's still a lot of areas that had some good crops this year. But, you know, I have, as a, as a father and a husband, as a husband and a father, I have a responsibility to make sure my family has food. Um, and so you never know, you know, it's never hurts to be, it's better to be safe than sorry. So I thought, you know what? I have space. I have some, some things here. I'm going to try it. Um, and so I got some potatoes here. Uh, I've got some seed potatoes. We were kind of, uh, getting little sprouts here and the i've got some lettuces here some cucumbers and it looks like these green beans also should work as well never done this before so um today is just kind of we're gonna throw them in pray for the best <laughs> do the best i can to make sure they're good and you know i can even rig up something to actually cover the beds if it starts, if I, you know, see in the weather there's a frost coming or something like that. Maybe I could put some sort of uh, plastic or something over these to kind of maybe like a, a dome type of thing to um, protect them. So objective is to see if I can get any of these to full growth. I have a space here and then I have a space up by the house we're gonna plant today and we're gonna see what happens. So uh, here we go. Here I've got a four by six section that I'm working with right now. And um, I'm just gonna plant them probably about, probably about a foot apart, you know, using kind of the square foot method. Um, they get about, uh, I think it's one potato plant per foot. Um, I'm going off memory. It's been a while since I've looked at, up the, the rule of thumb, but anyways, I'm gonna do three rows and just gonna fill them in until they get filled in and we'll see what happens. Start about there, here, here, uh, there. I'm gonna throw a couple more in here, <laughs> just for good measure. How about one in there? One right there, one right there. Okay, that's probably good. So I let my tomatoes go a little bit here, but I, w I did want to show you that uh, I try to try to really prune these as much as I can because it gets really, really hairy out here. And the more, the more leaves you have, the smaller the fruit, the less the fruit. So I try to keep them pruned really good and you need a lot of airflow as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one off here. I've got a tomato on this one. I'm going to trellis over here push that in there but uh yeah i'm pretty liberal with my pruning except here lately i've been a little busy and not doing as much as i should so it's gotten a little bit on the hairy side once they grow over the top you can either let them hang down a little bit 
or prune them off, you know, if it looks like they're really not any, um, any that are growing fruit here. I got some fruit over here. Let's pick that one. Pick some these here. But there's all this, uh, all this dead stuff here as well. See all the, the dead leaves and stuff like that? I just clip those and go down in here, pull some of the weeds and then go through here and pull, either pull them off or clip them if they're still, if they still have a little bit of green on them. Any type of rot that you see, you know, cut them out, cut them out, cut them out. Because it's just not helping the plant at all. And if you do find any that are molded, you want to actually burn those. Don't put them in your composting pile or anything like that because that will continue to be a problem if you do that and you reuse the compost. All right, so just a madman pruning away at his tomatoes here. Not a madman, a geek man. Yeah, yeah. Did I just do that? I did that. All right. Clipping away, clipping away. Get rid of all the stuff here. See, the more you prune, the more tomatoes you get. The happier the plant is. Whoops. <laughs> Pruned one with the tomato on it. It's okay. I can pick it up. Okay, these are really growing out the top here. Um, I think. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut them back a little bit because once they get too tall, they start breaking and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna cut them, actually cut them back here. And some of the lower branches will actually start pr producing fruit. Shoot, pr fruit shoots, fruit shoots, call them. There's a rotten tomato. Ugh. back fortunately this year I've not had any problems with uh, well I, earlier in the year I had a, a uh, tomato worm there one of those worms that have a big old horn on it back and this giant green scary looking one and I uh, took care of that one right away and fortunately haven't had a problem since so been blessed in that regard I like to try to come down and check every once in a while just to make sure. Because if you don't, man, they will get out of hand and they will eat everything. So, all right, we got some big boys right here. Um, so, I'm going to come on the other side of the trellis here. Got some uh, really long little suckers right here. Coming down here, up here. Alright, this one has a tomato on it, but I'm going to cut above it and let it trellis in here, finish its thing. I think I'll cut right there. There we go. And that'll grow nice and big. That'll go nice and big. All right, what do we got going on up here? We got some new growth here. This one's kind of coming out, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. That one. Yep, see how that one's coming down? It has a tomato on it, so I'm gonna cut just above that. Actually, I'll cut up here probably. And I'll let the tomatoes dangle in on the other side. There we go. One of the previous garden updates is tomato was really, this plant was really doing bad, but uh, it ended up taking off and you can see, I mean, it's it's moved all the way up, up to there. Right here's the top. So <laughs> tomatoes will find a way. They're pretty resilient plants. And as long as you give them a little TLC, they, they do pretty well. But yeah, that one didn't look like it was gonna make it, but it's uh, making some fruit. We got some right here, right there. A couple of little, few in there. I'm gonna prune around it and give it, uh, 
give us more uh, opportunity to do better. All right, let me show you what I did here. I actually dug out the uh, dug out this bed and mounded all the dirt up here because, you know, like I said earlier, the um, potatoes, whenever they start growing, you need to mound dirt back over them and keep piling dirt in around them. So I just dug out probably about six, seven inches, mounded it up there, and then I'm just going to cover these right here just a little bit. And what I have now is in this bed, I have all the dirt ready there on the ready to pull in and actually mount around the potatoes. So trying to make use of all the space I can and everything the, the earth is willing to give. You just have to be willing to uh, put in a little time and prepare it and put the uh, seeds and plants in there to grow. Oh, weather and the Lord and the weather will do the rest. All right, so I'll leave that. I'll leave that until they start coming up and start mounting. So I came up here to plant a few things in uh, next to my little herb garden I've got going on beside the house. Uh, over here I've got some um, lavender, and then over here I've got basil in the back, and then down here sage. This is actually the um, edible sage. I have a ornamental sage back there just for looks. Fills in the, the spot there, kind of something to focus on. And then I put right here, I put um, mint in the pots because mint can really take over. That one is not doing so well. I think I need to repot it or give it some nutrients. I did harvest a bunch of mint. There's one back there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. It's doing pretty well too. Um, could be doing better. But I actually, a few weeks ago, I did a major clipping of of all the, the basil. And a ba basil, man, if you're just starting out planting, basil is an amazing plant to start out with. You can hardly, hardly kill it. It's very easy to start from seeds, or you can get some, you know, at the at the, um, the, the garden center or nursery, wherever. Um, as, and it will keep leafing. I mean, it'll keep growing as long as you keep these things clipped right here. So you see, we have the, uh, the tips there starting to turn to, starting to flower. And if you just clip those off there, like that, then it, it just gives it more life. Once it starts turning the seed, then you know it's not going to leaf as much anymore. So now what I've done is I've just extended it and it's going to want to grow uh, more shoots. Um, and every time that you cut, I'll probably talk more about that some, some other time, but basically each time you cut one node off, more shoots kind of come out at different angles and it bushes out. So if I didn't cut them back, these would be really tall and kind of gangly looking. But I've, I've trimmed them back and they kind of, you can see how they're bushing out. Got these really big leaves on it. Smells so good. Okay, enough of that. So here's the space that I've cleared out. Um, I got the tractor up here the other day, brought some mulch up here, uh, cleaned out all the weeds. And I really didn't plant anything, plant anything here this year. But like I was uh, talking about yesterday, um, I have some food seeds. I'm gonna put some kale and some lettuce up here. It's closer to the house, so even when the cool weather comes, uh, it'll do a little bit better, last a little bit longer up here. So I'm gonna just fill this whole bed in with lettuce. So I've been planting this uh, Siberian dwarf kale for a couple of years now, maybe three years, and now at least two. And we just absolutely love it. It is, it grows very hardy. It's a cool weather uh, plant. And so, um, so the picture of what I've got here, you see that there. So it says that it grows out, needs about 24 inch spacing. Well, I do, um, eat there. I do actually, I space them one foot. So in, in a square foot garden, each square foot would have one of these plants because it gets nice, nice and big. So I've got my little crown here. And I'm going to measure out about a foot from the wall here. Okay, had it in real good. Locked in loaded. Got this red romaine. Um, they come in these little groups there, little bunches. Not so much leaf, I guess. Well, I guess they'd be leafy, but little pod looking things. Heads, heads, that's the word. <laughs> 
they say thin four inches, so I'm gonna plant four per square as well. So let's get my line here, a little space from there, give some room from the other plants. It's that one. And here's another one here. All right, just my next set of square, it's about right. Some space here, foot, and foot. There we go. Just make my little holes here. Yep. Dump them all in there. There we go. Really, really curious how this is going to do. Boy, I don't know how the audio was on that with with the uh, fan going over there. And I have some space right here. You know what? I'm just going to put some more right in here. Might as well use everything, man. Okay, well that's it for this bed. All right, check this out. I've got some beans growing here. These actually, uh, let's go right in here. Yeah, there are somewhere in there. I need to get rid of some of these weeds here. Anyways, I don't know. One of these Ecuadorian black beans had dropped in there somewhere and started growing. So I just kind of guided it up the uh, my little cattle panel here and so they got a few little pods you know nothing like over there but anyways that's that earlier this year I had grown some some sweet peas here and they didn't do very well but hey this is an unused space so I am going to plant some green beans in here and let's see what variety I've got oh yeah I got these garden uh, Blue Lake Stringless Garden Beans. So, not planted, I just opened them actually, as a matter of fact. So, we had them up there in our uh, in our seed box there. So I thought, you know what, let me throw these in. Well, that's that. We'll see how these grow. You'd be amazed how many bean pods you can get out of just a few plants like that. Well, that's it for my uh, garden update for uh, this video. I planted some potatoes, green beans, lettuce, kale, pruned my tomatoes, which are uh, already got some color coming back in. And if you remember, I was trimming off the top and it's, we had a little bit of rain. And I, I think we have more shoots coming up over there. so. Um, it's hard to over prune tomatoes, it really is. I'm gonna go get um, my box and pick a bunch of these, these black beans over here. Uh, they're, they're needing to be brought in and dried. But that's all for now. Geek with a tractor, keep tracking. Until next time, have a good one. Mm -hmm.